Russia and Tuan, you may leave us if you, you, if you want. Um, I will move over to, uh, to bring concluding remarks to this amazing week that we've spent together. And, uh, and in so doing, I, of course, uh, you don't see them here. Uh, I have the, the, the full force of, uh, of the entire team of Zeitzmoka and particularly the curatorial team and the communication team that have been uh, working very hard for, for, this, uh, for this event. So, uh, so my hope for this symposium, for this summit that we did for Zeitzmoka is very interestingly uh, to, to really set the museum as a site of listening. Uh, we organized this summit in order to listen to ourselves and but particularly also to listen to all the amazing speakers that we brought in and to listen to the audience that very actively uh, participate in the Q&A. We're in a time where this conversation become quite sterile just because of one thing and one fundamental thing is that we cannot gather, we cannot be together to share energy. So it is for this reason that we decided of course, to, to host the, the summit uh, online. It has been a way to reflect on, investigate, imagine, and source new ways of articulating the multifaceted forms of radical solidarity in our present time. It has also been a time that is characterized by uncertainty, angst, anticipation. Not that this is anything new, particularly for us on the continent. Uh, I think that we've been living um, the, a time of uncertainty ever since, you know, uh, we were raped in many ways. And uh, uh, however, uh, this situation that we found ourselves in with this pandemic sort of heightened that consciousness and uh, and i think that we as a nation's institution uh it was important for us to 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 uh, to speak to it to listen to it and to to work with it but it has also been a time a, a time of uh, of great hope and great strength and a lot of collegiality that we saw coming from the array of collaborators, friends, um, artists, thinkers uh, that we engage with on a daily basis. At this moment, where there are limits, of course, of physical gathering, we really wanted to bring those voices together to discuss, to discuss the possibilities that, can, that we can forge together through various transdisciplinary approaches. So just in recap, very briefly, to retain the main ideas of every day that we went through from, from Monday to today. On the first day, on the opening day, uh, the aim of the first day was to examine solidarity in terms of historic context of Pan-Africanism and transnational struggle. We had Justice Albi Sachs and Professor Ashim Bembe presented us with exhilarating reflections on uh, one from a lived experience from Justice Sachs and the other from important theoretical context and rigorous theoretical thinking by Ashil Bembe. Using the testimony of his life, Albi reminded us that South Africa's liberation could not have happened without the contribution of other African countries and other countries, but mainly from other African countries. I think this cannot be said enough in a South African context, how much African countries have fought and have participated in the anti-apartheid struggle. 
where Ashil pointed out that our current borders, man-made or ideological, are an obstacle to our mobility and creativity. They both provoked us to think about rebooting our institutions. This way, no African can be a foreigner in Africa anymore. Ashil also pointed, posited the concept of the Alphan Anti-Museum as a proposition. This is something that we will have to think over to research in order to embody it. But I love the poetry of the idea of the anti-museum. As we are working to, the, uh, to build an identity and hoping a shifting identity, and in, uh, but at least to start building an identity for Zeit Smoker, it becomes very important for, for us to understand what is it that this museum can do, not only for Cape Town, where it is located as an immediate kind of community, or South Africa in a larger sense, but really for the continent in its whole, but, and also for the idea of Africanity, talking about Afro-diasporic cultures and Afro-diasporic uh, uh, production. So we were provoked to think about the deborderized museum. Uh, our curatorial or institutional purview is already quite deborderized because Zeit Smoker stands for contemporary Africa and African diaspora. So it is quite borderless in the sense. But I think what the shield was, was thinking about and was, was expressing is really an idea of a, a radical laboratory of openness. So we were presented with the idea of solidarity at the age of life and death, which is really uh, a situation where many of us find ourselves in institutionally. Uh, how uh, the way that the pandemic has hit particularly cultural institutions very hard. So, so presented with this, this idea of solidarity at the age of life and death, where we tie the life of self and the life, our lives to others' lives. So the idea of uh, a deborderized experimental space was further emphasized by Harun Gonzali during his live performance in which he occupied the space inside the museum. You can see it, I am not in Cape Town now, so I couldn't experience it myself, but uh, I only saw uh, an amazing work and uh, by an artist that, uh, that we, we, cher we cherish a lot. Uh, he took us on an autobiographical, biographical, autobiographical, I will get it, autobiographical journey in search of uh, a restorative justice. He asked, he asked us to reckon the names, monument space, and the potential violence of capitalism when it comes to mourning and memorializing Black bodies locally and beyond. On day two, we explored we explored printed matter, text, language, transmission of knowledge. Our first panel explored the idea of activism and writing through digital platforms today. Ukola Oyebode, Nantikelelo Mutiti, Reming Ngamiche, Awakonate Sakinsina, in various ways asked that question For whom are we creating our stories for? Who has access to them? Through them, we learned about critical writing, how critical writing was transforming narratives from spaces like Namibia, Zimbabwe, and the vast and multifaceted diaspora. Writing is a vital field we need to write ourselves into this proliferation of platforms with much abundance and less refrain. In our second panel on the same day, within the same focus of printed matter, writing, and language, Nadia Davis from uh, Africa is a Country and Professor Frida Koto from University of Michigan and Dr. Francoise Vergès graciously reminded us that we are part of an important continuum. We were reminded to learn from our ancestors and that language can also take the form of sound. I love that part. 
It can also take the form of silence and it can also take the form of the gesture. In spaces where there, is, where there is no language, invent your own language. Love, of course, is a powerful form of articulation that can be translated in many different ways. We need to make museums or spaces of art in our own terms. And when you can't speak, sing. I think it's uh, Dr. Francois Vergès who suggested that. Invite a stranger in and think of ways of making them welcome. And that welcome from an institutional perspective is something that a lot of uh, organizations as museum struggle or grapple with. How do you make your visitors welcome? How do you make your organization or your institution accessible beyond the declarative term of it's access for all. What is access for all? How is access for all? And that is really the crux of a lot of conversations for us at the museum. The film for that day, Seismography of Struggles by Zahia Ramani, showed us solidarity in print. Uh, I have to tell you that this is one of my very, one of really my favorite works that I've seen in the last couple of years. Uh, of uh, research about printed matter. And uh, we were presented with an, an inventory of non-European critical and cultural journals, including those from African, Indian, Caribbean, Asian, and South American diaspora, produced in the wake of the revolutionary movements in the late, in the end of the 18th century, the end of the 19th century, up to the watershed year of 1989. Um, for those of you who, for whatever reason, have missed to see that particular uh, work, that particular screening, I strongly recommend you to go back to the link and watch this film because it is an unparalleled work of I was talking about parallelism earlier and simultaneity of struggles. And there you see it in, in its most, I mean, magnificent way. Often those struggles were born out of urgency and necessity. A critical and cultural journal is through its hybridism, its mobility and its precarious existence a pure object of colonial experience. So by its nature, it is a laboratory of modernity at the same time. On day three, it was important to come away from such thought-provoking events with practical solutions as well. And for this reason, we appreciated the contribution of my brother and dear friend, Bonaventure Sobejeng Dikung of Savvy Contemporary, who questioned something that Juan Andrew Nguyen reminded us just earlier, where is the solid in solidarity? This was in our third day of the summit where we were looking at the collectivity and collaboration as radical practice. The panel included Bonaventure, so Bejeng Dikung, as just mentioned, Marie-Hélène Pereira for our material company, Diana Campbell Betancourt for the Dakar Art Summit, and, and one group and was moderated by Tammy Langtree. This group of incredible individuals exemplified the subtleness of solidarity. Radicality does not always need to express itself in an extreme ways. It can be inaudible or even invisible. Having multiple perspectives is key as contributors often blur the lines of art social activity and politics. We need more spaces of non-competition. And this is very dear to me. Uh, I strongly believe that we all work, work for the same cause. And that the same cause being service to art, preservation of intellectual production and service to artists. So uh, from whatever perspective,
expecting that we deliver that service. It should be absolutely in a space of togetherness. So I personally don't believe in any competition in any way or in any form, and particularly not in the field that I choose to work in for the last 25 years. So we were also reminded that joy can be, should be central to all of this. And also that joy is resistance, that joy is a relief, and that joy and pleasure are powerful energies for us to hold on, to move on, and to continue. The film screening on that day, Mother, I am suffocating, this is my last film about you, by Tlemohan Jeremia Moses, was a beautiful lamentation of the human condition connecting subjectivity and otherness. It reminded us of the necessity of the shift of the status quo. Yesterday on day four, the day was dedicated to urban imaginaries, mobilities and why so many borders as its title. The title included Edgar Pitesse who spoke from a from a, he meant he's a technocrat. I don't really agree with Edgar that he's a technocrat. Uh, viewpoint for Matipa, Matipa, who offered speculative idea. Tauta Venka, who highlighted the South South connections. Emeko Kereke, who highlighted the artistic, artistic production element. And this was moderated by our senior curator, Storm Janse van Rensburg. They expanded the, the disjunction. Uh, between policy, autocratic continental goals with potential utopia and imaginaries. What new forms of articulations are needed to deal with mobility today and in the future? They reminded us that love and the power to dream are paramount. We need to be reminded of that constantly and as well as greater interdependence among states and peoples. I mean, uh, I learned about, I'm, I'm really committed to interdependency. I learned about interdependency very young. My grandmother, who was not educated in the Western sense of being educated, who was not alphabetized in the Western sense of being alphabetized, taught me a lesson very young. I was around five or something like that. I've always been extremely bold and extremely, uh, as you say, feisty uh, from young on. She, 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 she explained it to me to the, my, the five fingers of my hand in talking about interdependency. She said that you see your fingers, they are all in one hand, but they all have different sizes. They are all sort of independent. They can do different things on their own. But once you lose one of them, then you realize how dependent or interdependent they are. So I always keep that in mind and uh, to understand how much I depend on others and how much people de other people depend on me and how that connection and how that togetherness is really the fundament of anything that anybody can do on this journey. Uh, so it's, uh, it's really, um, they expanded, they examined the disjunctions between the policy autocracy and so on. What new forms of articulations are needed to deal with mobility and in the future? On that day, we also had this beautiful experience to listen to, to have, I mean, uh, I'm sure many of you took the time to, uh, to, to listen into the beautiful mixtape of uh, uh, put together by Timorenga about Festac pointing us back to one of the greatest examples of radical solidarity on the continent. It offered the planetary scale of the event alongside the personal and artistic encounters it made possible. So in today's conversation, we are closing about this interdependence again between the South-South dialogue from Vietnam to Palestine, to the continent, to Africa, to North Africa, to Senegal, to South Africa, 
And uh, it is really a, um, a pleasure for us for, to have done this. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, this summit uh, is also uh, quite an important marker in our institutional kind of timeline uh, moving forward because as we are making this, this museum, it becomes really important for us to put out there what we can do together and also to signal very clearly that Zaitz Moka is a place of togetherness, is a place where we can really debate, engage in difficult conversation, but also in joyful conversation. So uh, thank you very much. I want to also like to thank uh, Black Star Line Kumasi for taking over Zaitz Moka Instagram. For those of you who are Instagram, you certainly have, show, uh, have seen the beautiful feed that they put together and uh, uh, which also have had archival material, historical material that they shared. It was really beautiful. Black Star Line is an experimental incubator of contemporary art and uh, a sharing community who really practice solidarity on a daily basis. It, it has a lineage of radical art and community projects dating back to the 19, early 1990s and it is responsible for demystifying art from classical and pre-1960s European modernist predetermination in Ghana's foremost art college at Knust in, uh, in Kumasi. Um, I will not speak any further uh, because I know that you, you are ready to see, uh, we are closing with a beautiful theme that my dear colleague Tandanzani Tlakama is happy to introduce to you. It's Tuan Andrew Nguyen's film, uh, The Spectres of Ancestors Becoming. Uh, thank you all very much. Thank you to the entire team of Zeitz Moka for putting this together, for supporting it throughout the week. And uh, yes, there is more to come about this in the coming months. Have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs>